Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are continuing the series of how to get into medical school. We've talked about the general overview, we've talked about the MCAT, we've talked about your work and activity section, and we've talked about the personal statement. Today is all about your coursework. When I say coursework, I mean the prerequisites that you need to have before you matriculate into medical school, so before you start. A prerequisite is a course that you want to have completed before you go into medical school. I suppose it's not that you just want to have it completed, you must complete it before you start medical school. You can have some of them in progress, of course, when you apply, but you must have finished those courses by the time you start school. Every U.S. medical school requires a four-year bachelor degree from an accredited college or university. Yes, you have to have your four-year degree, but you also have to have these prerequisite courses completed. Why is this important at all? I would venture to say strong academic performance is the most important aspect of your application. Of course, the things we've talked about previously are extremely important, but I would argue that this is the most important requirement no amount of extracurriculars is going to overshadow a low GPA. I would also venture to say no matter how high your MCAT score is, it's not really going to overshadow a low GPA. So it's extremely important. Yes, a high MCAT score is great, but that shows you did really, really well one time. Your GPA is cumulative. It shows how hard you worked in college and it shows how consistent you were. The MCAT, that could just be a wonderful day and that would be great to have a really high score on just a lucky day when you take the test, but your GPA shows the admissions committee she is committed to her academic performance. She studies well throughout all of her classes. She's not slacking in one area and really well in the other. Your GPA is your grade point average. So it's gonna show this average of how well you are doing in all of your courses rather than just one specific course. So it's extremely important to show that you're committed and you're determined to academic performance because that is gonna be very important when you get into medical school. So which classes are required? I would suggest you look at each school's requirements because some schools do vary. I was looking at about four different schools in Georgia and there were a few bad courses that were different than the others. So I looked at the school I was mainly applying to and made sure I had checked all those off. I'm gonna list a few of the basic ones. You're gonna have to have one year of lecture and lab. That normally means two semesters, so two separate classes of biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, and physics. Some schools require some maths, my school required statistics and pre-calculus. I believe some schools even require calculus. Biochemistry is required at some schools. Psychology and sociology is required. And English is required, I think, at majority of schools. Not only are all of these courses required, they are all going to help you. Sometimes I think that they just choose these really difficult courses as a weed out process. And I do believe some of that is true. Ochem, like, like how often are we gonna use Ochem? I don't know. But these are classes that are gonna be beneficial to you when you get into medical school so you are going to actually want to have taken these classes it's not just something that you're going to check off yes of course it's the checklist you got to get that completed but they are going to help you in the long run they're going to help you learn how to study for hard courses and some of the material is definitely going to come back like biology and biochemistry i feel like that's going to come back and be very helpful in medical school now lydia you mentioned earlier that you're required to have a four-year degree what is it supposed to be what about my degree what about my major you can choose any major which is fantastic if you want to go into something completely different than biology by all means do it and I honestly think your major can give you a leg up. Yes, biology is the typical pre-med major because a lot of these prerequisites are already required for your degree and a lot of the people going into medical school are just interested in biology. But if you have a different major that's like completely different than science, it shows that you are interested in something else, but you also have to take these prerequisites. It shows that you're capable of a lot when it comes to your academic performance. You can do these hard science classes, but you can also do the classes that you enjoy. So if you are a religion major or a music major or art major, that's fantastic because it shows diversity. I think it will give you a leg up. My degree was not super out there. I have an exercise and sports science degree. And I think that is like a unique feature about me. I did mention that when I was talking about my personal statement video, that was a unique feature that I wanted to highlight. I did learn a lot of fun things in exercise science, but it's not as out there as like a fine arts degree. And I think that would really make you stand out. So choose whatever major you want to. Of course, you're gonna have to think, do I really wanna be an engineer major while I'm applying to medical school? I feel like that would be really difficult, but you do you. Have fun choosing a major. Just of course be wise. <laughs> Here are my top tips to do well in your coursework. Spaced repetition. This is a study method that I think is essential. This is a method of reviewing material at systematic intervals. This goes back to a psychological effect called the spacing effect. When information is repeatedly learned, it's encoded into your long-term memory when it's spaced out at intervals. For instance, you have a lecture 8 a.m. Monday morning. You're gonna review that lecture 
Monday afternoon. And then you're gonna review it Tuesday afternoon. And then maybe you'll review it Friday afternoon. And then maybe you'll review it next Thursday afternoon. So it's gonna space it out longer and longer, but it's gonna be encoded into your long-term memory rather than that short-term memory that's just really quick memorization. It helps you understand material more and remember it more for that cumulative final exam or any exams or tests or quizzes you have coming up. There are some apps you can use to plug in the lectures you have and then it will space out things for you. There's also an app called Anki, which is where you can make flashcards and then the app will space it out for you over time. And if you're getting the question wrong, it's gonna show up more. If you're getting the question right, it's gonna show up less and less until it's like, you're gonna see this card in four months. It's gonna be spaced out very well for you to really solidify it in your memory. And also this is just less overwhelming in the long run. You might think, why am I reviewing this material so much? It's a lot less overwhelming when you get to the final exam. You're not having to cram information in your brain for two days straight. You already have it encoded into your long-term memory. And this is important because we want to be in medical school, right? And we want to remember all those things for when we actually have to practice as a physician. Get involved. Go to office hours. Get to know your TAs. You got to play the game a little bit. Just a little. If you get to know your TAs, they're maybe going to tell you a little bit about how the quizzes work, like how the questions are worded, or what things you should focus on more and more. Also, when office hours, the professor is going to harp on some things more than others, and you're going to catch on to things that are going to be more important on the exam than other things. Also, when you get involved, it shows that you're invested and you want to learn. So that's going to be good when we talk about our letters of recommendation in an upcoming video. But yeah, when you get involved, I feel like you get some insight into what's going to be on those tests and quizzes, and that's going to increase your GPA because you're going to do well on those exams. Create a study schedule, kind of like I was saying with that spaced repetition. That's going to create a study schedule for you, but also if an exam is coming up in a week and a half, make sure you start studying early enough that you are not cramming it. And also, when you're creating your daily schedule, think about that. Maybe time block it. Say from 8 to 10, I'm going to study biochemistry, and then I'm going to take a 30-minute break. And then from 10.30 to 12, I'm going to focus on anatomy. Rather than saying, I got to study all this and I don't know how and I'm just going to sit for eight hours straight, it's not as productive as creating a schedule. Along with that, study with your personality. If you are a morning person, study in the mornings where your brain is most ready. If you are a night owl, don't go against that. Don't be ashamed of that. Study in the evening if that is the best time for you. I feel like I'm a mid-morning gal. I'm not going to wake up at 5 a.m. and start studying. If I didn't have class, I feel like 8 to 11 were my prime time hours to study. Don't go against your personality. If you need music playing, probably listen to headphones because some people don't like music playing when they study. Figure out what works for you. If you want white noise, if you want the rain sounds, if you want some study beats in the back, or if you need complete silence, like me, I need complete silence. Figure out what works for you. And lastly, try to explain it to someone else. The someone else can be an invisible person. The amount of times I have talked to someone fake in my room when I'm trying to explain a concept is so funny. If you can explain it to someone else, that means that you really understand the material. I've actually gotten up and acted like I'm teaching a class before because it really helped me encode that information. It checked myself. Do I actually know what I'm talking about? Do I actually understand this material? Some people want to call their parents up and say, well, this is what I'm learning. I'm going to give you a lecture right now. And maybe they can ask questions back. And that would be even more helpful because it's going to make you think really hard. Do I really know this information? The Bible verse for today is Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. When we are completing our coursework, it's going to be really hard, but we need to be diligent and work hard because everything we do is to glorify the Lord. He's given us our brain to use to learn things and he's created our amazing bodies and our anatomy and our physiology and these things that we're learning are so cool. When you actually think about it, the Lord created all this. It's crazy. Work hard for the Lord to glorify him in everything and it's just such a simple verse. Whatever you do, work heartily. Ask for the Lord and not for men. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, Please do not hesitate to reach out. You can comment down below. You can message me on Instagram. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day and be a blessing to others today. Bye, guys.